Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games. Right in the middle of it. Back with another cool ah, uh, pitch and bat repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this 1962 Williams World Series. And we've done a bunch of uh, bunch of repair videos on it so far. So if you didn't see those, we did one where we kind of did an overview of it and kind of figured out what was going on with it. Um, we did one where we worked on the mechanism board and figured out that they took a bunch of stuff off of it at some point. We did one where we worked in the back box. Uh, and so now we're kind of up to, we're going to try to troubleshoot this thing and get it doing its, doing what it's supposed to do. Now, this thing was operated at Myrtle Beach for many, many, many years. And they modified it from the typical gameplay to make it more of like a beach attraction. So, for instance, it doesn't have the, uh, the innings. It will not play innings. <laughs> uh, you just get three strikes and you're out. Um, they took out one of the well. They, they took out one of the high score reels, and then the other one they just had laying in there because they didn't want people to get their score confused with the high score. So they had it set up where if you win 22 runs, you want a free teddy bear that was hanging on the wall up above it. Okay, so it's kind of set up to play like that. It also originally had this thing where all of these lights came on as you won certain things, and then if you got all the lights on, you won a free game. Uh, so they had that, and that does not, that no longer functions on this one. They've, they've removed uh, some of the stuff for that. Uh, so we're trying to get the thing back up and running, though, where you can play it, at least in your house, for a customer uh, that brought it to us. And it's kind of cool that it's one of the ones that was actually at the beach. The cabinet's kind of ugly right now because they had a bunch of them uh, side by side, about 15 of them in a row. And this was one of the ones in the middle, so you couldn't see the sides of it. There was just another one on each side. So uh, they repainted the front of it, but they didn't bother to paint the whole rest of the cabinet. The ones on the end, uh, the whole thing was painted. But So we're, uh, we're going to do a video, though, where we paint that, get it all looking good. So don't worry. Don't fret. So here we are, though. Uh, we haven't worked on the bottom of the playfield yet, and we haven't worked on the running man unit. So I think that's what we're hearing whenever you turn it on now we had it up and playing on the previous video and you could you could uh, score a run by just dropping a, you know uh, your finger in the hole where you score a run but it would never actually give you a run but we were getting this the running man unit to work it just the little man wasn't popping up so if you're not familiar with those I'm about to show it to you um, I'm gonna turn it back on and then I'll show you what that noise is that we're hearing The base runners are just running, 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 running. And that one, I don't know, I guess that's when it gets to home or something. But that's what we're going to work on next. So let me slide this out a little bit. And we'll pull this unit out and see what's going on with it. Okay, folks, so the whole unit just slides right out of the back really easily. This one has seen better days, but don't worry. We're going to get it all fixed up. So, of course, we're looking at the back of it. The whole purpose of the thing is, whenever you are uh, watching from the front, the little guy pops up and runs over to first base and then stays on first base, if you got a single or whatever, and then might run around to third base, and there's actually a little figure that pops up. They called it the running man unit, and then when it gets over here, it lays back down. Pretty cool, but it ain't working. This here is the remnants of the backdrop. So there are, there are pieces of cardboard on each side inside the cabinet. And then there was a grandstand that stretched around to make it look more like an actual, uh, an actual baseball field. So we're going to have to figure something creative out about that too. They don't make those anymore. But don't worry. We'll figure it out. Um, so yeah. I got to straighten these guys up. They shouldn't be like all beat up. I don't even know how that happened. And it looks like they're made of cardboard. So there's the catcher. 
It's the batter. The pitcher. First base. I always get shortstop confused, but I guess that's second base and that's shortstop, but I don't know. Let me think. If you're right-handed, you're going to stand on this side. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know which one. I mean, I guess he's shortstop because he's between. Can you tell I haven't played baseball in a long time? So, anyway, you got your little guys there. All right. I'll bet all you baseball fans are just super excited that I'm the one that does the video for this. <laughs> oh, here's some more light bulbs. I didn't know those were down there. Um, why would those be down there? What's that supposed to light up? That must light up the back. See, we're at the front. Let's go look at the cabinet again. Those lights... Now remember, this was at the beach, so it's been abused. Abused, and they modified a bunch of it. It would be mounted in there, and so those lights would be back there and would illuminate that. That is... Seems like that's transparent, so yeah, that, that, that'll look cool. We'll see if we can get that going. Get a little light on the play field. You can see where they painted some of it and started to flake off. Okay, so that's what those are for, folks. Just in case you didn't know. Of course I knew. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, back where we were. Are you getting dizzy yet? So in the back of the game, there is a Jones plug right there. And to be honest, when I plugged the cabinet in, I did not clean that Jones plug yet. So it could be as simple as that. But we have a motor here that's obviously working very well. And let me show you what happens. Now, I believe... Let's see. Let's hear it click. Click. Okay. So we're in place there. Now let's say we want to throw that guy up. There is a coil here, it looks like. Now I've never messed with one of these, but we're going to figure it out. If that coil were to pull in, it would move this bar up like so. And let's say the coil holds in and it goes... And it's connected some little, some little switches here. And then the next time that goes around, I'm running out of hands here, people. Let's see if I can Spider-Man it over. The next time it comes around, look what's going to happen. The lever hits that. Howdy ho! Okay, and then maybe this lets go. Okay, so now our base runner, he didn't go all the way up. Maybe we should, maybe we gotta oil that or something. But event, you know, he would go all the way up. Bam! Something like that. Okay, and then it would run around and he'd say, A click! He's on first base. And they're always kind of sideways, so you can't really see them, right? And then here we go. He's running, he's running. Click. He made it to second base. Ooh. Okay, there was a wire back there that it hit and it moved him down again a little bit. Ooh boy, I gotta be careful. Okay, click, he's on third base. Don't want to mess up our little players. Okay, now here he comes. He's coming home. He's going for it. He hit the switch there so that it knows what just happened. So here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. And he slides in the home. Bam! Safe! What an ingenious little contraption this is. Okay, so uh, all that's turning, but and it looks like everything's set up as it should be. I see some cut wires here. Like I said, they modded a bunch of stuff, so I don't know what that would go to. Maybe there was a switch here or something. Um, hmm, I don't see anything missing. 
But obviously that did something that they decided they did not want anymore. So that's been removed. Uh, so I got a bunch of switches I need to clean. So I'm going to clean the switches just like we always do. Just clean the actual uh, contacts here. And see this, actually it looks like this would run until it got to there maybe. But that doesn't seem right because then the guy wouldn't be on base. Hmm. See, yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, that's probably the wrong one. There's different ones. Okay, let's see. So that's one there. Hmm, I can't tell where the home position would be. Oh, there we are. Is that it? Yeah, okay. There's the home position. See it back there? Click. You're in home position, and everybody's at the right position. Home, first, second, third. Okay, so that must be the switch that turns the, the motor off if anything else isn't turning it on. They're running for it. They're running for it. They're running for it. Bam. They're back to the bases they're supposed to be on. Okay, so I just need to clean all of that, get all that going. So there's switches up here that it looks like the base runner hits as he runs by which are used for something, right? So we'll check that out. There's another one down there. One, two, three, I see four different ones. Okay, so I'll start cleaning these. On the other side there are relays too. Let's see if they're labeled as to what they may be. Let me go across so I don't drop it on the floor. So this is looking from the back of the machine. This says the number two relay. What do you think about that? I'll bet maybe that's the number one relay. That's the one that pulls in to kick the guy up. This says the number three relay. I wonder what this one's called. Shockingly, the number four relay. And finally, what do you think this one's called? And that's the motor relay. Come on, people. Come, pe they couldn't do it. Pe look, they come on now. C come on, people. They started it too. People. That couldn't have been. Why would they do two, three, four? Five? They wouldn't do that. Why? Why would there's four? There, there's only four. If you count, if you count home, there's four. But they they wouldn't need a five. They just would not need a five. Why would they need a five? Come on, people. You knew better than that. Come on now. Okay, so I'm going to clean all of these. And basically, same old, same old. We just need to make sure that everything does what it's supposed to do. So if you haven't seen our other 400 videos we've done on this, this is a make or break switch. So it's connected. This long blade in the center is connected to this outside one right now. Okay. And when power goes to the coil, it pulls in. Wham! And it goes from one to the other. Now this is a closed switch here. Now watch what happens. Wham! It's open. And then closed. Open. Closed. This is also a closed one. That one may need a little adjustment. It looks like maybe the contacts burn up on it. And then another make or break one over here. And if you look, the entire... The, it's old. This is old. 1962. And this, this little... I call it Bakelite. You can call it whatever you want. This little fiberboard here link has kind of sagged over the years and you see this one isn't quite like that but it's got the same basic thing going on so we just need to clean all those and basically you're trying to get it where electricity will pass through those and then we're going to need to mess with it mechanically we're going to need to oil some stuff to get it where these guys will move up and down see how when i move it right now it just barely kind of moves you know it should move better than that it's just gummed up. Somebody probably sprayed WD-40 on it 50 years ago. Uh, and you got to be careful though whenever you mess with these because this track is, uh, a, you know, cyclical. But this guy can only go up at home plate. He can't go up here. He'll hit the wood and you'll break it. And then you're in trouble. Okay, so I'm going to clean those switches 
And if I run into anything weird, I will show you. Okay, here are the schematics a mile long. I've been cleaning through it. I got all the switches cleaned. Most of them are adjusted right. And I oiled all four of the little base men, and now they're moving really good. I had to move some of the base men that were standing on the play field back a little bit so that the runners didn't hit them as they went by. Some of them were leaning over the track. But I got all that right, I think. So I'm trying to figure out how the thing is supposed to work. So I'm walking through it. So if you hit the run switch, it pulls in the run unit step up coil. Now the run switch, I think, is the one on the play field that the, the little running man hits last. So it's supposed to be a gray and a green wire and a red wire on that switch, right? So I believe that it's this switch. And it makes sense, that would be the last switch that gets closed. Just as the little man's about to get to home. Okay? Now, it's so faded, you can't tell what colors they are. But it does appear that one's red. This other one supposedly is gray and green. I can't tell. And I tried to track it through here. I can't tell. But to me, it makes sense that that's the run switch. And if you think about it, that would solve all the problems. Because then you don't have to do math of like, okay, what's a single and a double... Okay, if, if I hit a single, then I hit a double. The, the guy on first would go to third and blah, 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 blah. We worked on a Gottlieb uh, home run that had a running man unit where it was lights on the bottom. And it was complex as hell. Um, not as complex as this. This actually has a motor. But it was very complex. But you could get rid of all of that if you simply put a switch right at the end that the man hits as he runs by. And that's a run. Easy peasy. And then it just depends on who pops up, right? So I think that's how they do it. So I think that's where we're at. So it looks like the reason we weren't scoring runs is because that switch was never getting hit because none of the men had popped up. So what makes the little men pop up? Well, that's a good question. I'm trying to figure it out. There are four single switches. So like you hit a single on the play field. Then you would close that switch. Okay. And so if that switch closes, it would send power down this way and pull in what they're calling the loading coil. Well, that sure seems like the big coil that we found that pulls in and... Uh, puts a little bar out and makes the little running man hit it. I'll bet that's the loading coil. And at the same time, if the motor relay is not on, then it's still closed and it would ring a small bell. Ding! Because you hit a single. Okay, so once the loading coil's on, how do you get the man run motor to turn on, to, to make it start running. Well, it looks like the number two relay has to close. So how do you get the number two relay to close? <laughs> well, the number two relay can't close itself, right? So the number two relay closes if you hit a double Or you hit uh, the number three relay. Okay. <laughs> so how does the number three relay pull in? The number three relay can't hold itself on. Pulls in if you hit a triple. So I still can't figure out how a single does it. So a single would give you the bell and then the loading coil and then you know it would also send power this way so if the start relay wasn't tripping which it wouldn't be and if the reset hold relay wasn't in and if the third out relay hadn't pulled in well then power would come down this way through the motor relay which is not working yet to here 
Oh, what's that? On the other side of the number two relay. And then, bam, turn on the man run motor. Well, that's convoluted, isn't it? So it looks like if you hit a single, a double, or a triple, there is a different way to get on that to get that man run motor running. And that thing is moving. So uh, we just need to get this loading coil to pull in. So what happens if the loading coil? So you know we didn't hit a single. We hit a double. So the number two relay comes in. The motor relay is not on. It sends power up this way, through the third out relay, through the reset hold relay, through the start relay, and BAM! Turns on the loading coil. Well, what happens if you hit a triple? Well, this switch closes, which closes the number three relay. The number three relay closes, which closes the number two relay. The number two relay closes, and the motor relay is not on, so it goes through the third out relay, the reset hold relay, the start relay, and BAM! It turns on the loading coil, too! Holy moly, what a brilliant design! So that's why they got all those switches down there. There's a lot going on. Alright. Um, so I guess that's... So I think we just weren't scoring runs because it wasn't actually hitting that switch because the little men hadn't jumped up yet. So here's what we're going to do. I've got the bases loaded, folks. Look, there's a runner on first, there's a runner on second, and there's a runner over here on third. See the clearance issue? You gotta make sure that you don't hit the, the players as you go by. So, uh, here we're running, we're running. Here comes the, here comes the guy on third. <laughs> Let's see if he does his thing. Bam! He fell down, okay? We're running, we're running. Here comes the next guy. <laughs> Bam! He fell down, okay? We're running, we're running. Here comes the next guy. He's sliding in the home. Bam! Pretty cool. Alright, so I don't know about getting the loading coil. I don't know about that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the plugs that go into this Jones plug. And I'm, we're going to go ahead and slide it back in. Because I've oiled everything I can oil. Cleaned every switch I can clean. I don't know what these are for. I can't find what that is. The answer may become apparent eventually. But it could be that this unit was used in several different machines. All of them that use this running man unit. And um, it just uh, wasn't used in this machine. I mean, it looks like something could go right there, doesn't it? But see the see the lock nuts there. I don't believe there were ever any on there. There may have been. What do you think? What's your opinion? And if there were, if there was a switch on there, what did it go to? There's nothing here. So it could have been that some versions of this had a third plate with a third set of switches that ran on another cam for some reason. So that's where we're going to go with. Okay, so I'm going to slide it back in. Let me see if I've got light bulbs. I'll put these in and we'll see if we get more light on the play field, if that's going to be a thing or not. Okay, so now before we slide that back in, I'm going to show you this area up here. On a, on a lot of these games, there was a piece of plastic up there with a little window in it. And if you hit up the ramp, which this one's missing, if you hit up the ramp, the ball would go up, and if you landed right in that hole, you actually made a grand slam. But again, this was at the beach, and they didn't want you making a grand slam. They didn't want that, so it was all—it was just simplified where they wanted you to get runs, 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 runs. Um, they took off the curve ball mechanism, uh, the thing that made it a slow ball or a fastball. It just throws the same pitch over and over again, and they did—they wanted it a simple little game, so they took that out. So that was what was illuminated originally. And from the back, you can see the lonely little thing where the ball would have landed if you made the uh, Grand Slam. And it would have hit a special switch in their Grand Slam switch. So they have taken that piece of plastic out and put another piece of plastic that they spray painted red. So we're going to put lights behind that. It might not look all that great, but that's basically what's going on. Okay, so it did light up the red. Let's turn off the lights see how it looks like then. We 
Would you put a quarter in this at the beach? I know I would. Um, you can't really see with it red like that, though. You can't really see the uh, single, double, out, triple. Okay, so uh, obviously lots more lights to fix, but we've got this lit up pretty good. Uh, we need to do these soon. Let's see if it will score anything. So we put it in... It was still doing that reset thing whenever I turned it back on. Uh, by, by hitting the coin mech, I was able to get the game to start. So we'll, we're still messing with that. Okay, so let's hit it like a single and see if anything happens with the running man. No. Okay, so the coil... Do you see the little bar in there that we were just messing with? So that is not pulling in. Okay, so the remember though, to hit a single, you had to do the convoluted way of getting to it. Okay, so if we hit a double, it actually works different. So let's see if the double makes it work. It does not. Okay, and then the triple won't because the triple makes it work by making the double switch work. Okay. It does seem to be counting it right though, like if you hit double. I think it went twice, did it? Am I tripping? So let's do single. If you look, you can see the, the basement. One base. Double. Oh, double's doing one base too. Okay, triple. Triple seemed to do two. I don't know. So we got to keep messing with that. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can figure out why that coil is not pulling in to load the base man. What's going on with that? Okay, folks, so back to the schematics. Now these things look really complicated, but they're not really once you start breaking it down. So we're going to look at it a little bit. Okay, now when we hit a double or single or whatever, it's making the man run motor work. So that tells us that this line over here is all fine. That motor's fine. And then this connection this way is fine. Now, like we looked at earlier, the number two relay is pulling in, which is making that work. So we know that the number two relay is working as well. Okay. So it looks like when that relay pulls in and it sends power over here, which we know it's doing, we should have power here. So it's going up to a motor relay, which since it isn't in, should be sending power up to the third out relay. The third out relay should not be tripped, so it should go across that. And then it should go across the reset hold relay, which it shouldn't be tripped, so it should go across that. And then it should go across the start relay, which shouldn't be tripped, so it should go across that, and wham! Hit our loading coil. So we need to check all of those switches. So we know this one's fine. This motor relay is next up, okay? So how do you figure it out? Well, it's a 16-1, and it should be connected to a 49-1. So what does that mean? That's the colors of the wires. So 16 is red with a brown stripe, and then the other one I think said 49, that's green with a gray stripe, okay? And then the number after it, is how many of those same color wires are in the machine. So was it 16 and 49, I think? Where were we? Loading coil. 16 and 49. Yeah, so we're looking for the motor relay and then the red and brown wire should be connected to the green and gray wire. Okay, so we're in the back of the running man unit. This is the number two relay. Okay. It's pulling in and making the motor turn on. That same exact power goes over here to this motor relay. So it needs to be connected through a normally connected switch. So the one on the right, look at that. It can't be more connected than that, folks. And then the one on the left, look at that, very connected. Right? And so I tested them with a multimeter down on the lugs, and yes, both of those are connected right now. So that is correct. So that should not be the problem. On to the next switch. So the reason I was showing the two sets of switches is because I can't tell which ones are which by the wire colors because they're also faded. Okay, so then once the power goes from there, it jumps over to the third out relay. 
and there should be a wire connected on it. 49, which is green and gray still, of course, and J, which would be a jumper. So a jumper is running from one of these over to the reset hold relay. Okay, so let's go find the third out relay. Okay, it started getting real. None of these are marked. The three back there are, but none of these other ones are. So I actually have another bottom board that came with the game. None of those are marked either. And I've got another machine from 1963. That's, that's mine. So I went and took mine apart. And it's all different. Doesn't look anything like this one inside. Things are in different places, different setup. So within a year, they completely changed it up. And remember, this one's been modified um, because it was at the beach. So I needed to find the third out relay. So the way you do something like that, you just got to be smarter than the machine, people. The third out relay has a wire going to it to the coil that's 68 so that is brown and black so a brown and black wire runs to the coil and then when it goes back to its hold switch on the other side of the hold switch is a brown and yellow brown and black brown and yellow but remember they're all faded so if you look and you look and you look and you know it's not a latch, a latching switch, a latching uh, coil relay that holds itself on. Okay, so it's none of those. So it might be that one, but the wires didn't add up. And so if you look and you look and you look, you eventually get here. And the wire running from the coil is brown and black. And then on the other side of its switch that hold that it locks itself in with, it is, in fact, brown and yellow. <laughs> right? So I actually wrote third out relay there next to it. So we were looking for a normally closed switch that has a green and yellow wire running to it. And then the other side of the switch is a jumper. So see that little red wire? So that one, I measure with my multimeter, and it is definitely con conducting. So it's fine. Well, now we have the jumper that runs over to the next one. And so I was able to confirm with the wire colors that that is, in fact, the reset hold relay. So I checked between the two blades of this switch, and they are also connected. So now I have power connecting from there all the way through here, right? And then it goes to another jumper that goes from here over to the start relay. And so the start relay, this is the switch here. Okay? And it's also connected, so it's just fine. But I marked those three, okay? So then what does the wire do? Well, it runs up and it goes to that solenoid. So I checked on the solenoid and we're not connected from the bottom to here. So if you go back through the wires broke. So this wire has been soldered on that Jones plug about 20 times it looks like. But we're going to do it once and for all. Okay, so the reason these things pull apart, it's always at the end there. You see this on a lot of machines. It's because they use this nylon, or whatever, not nylon, cat gut, whatever it is, <laughs> to tie this stuff together, wax string, right? And there, it wraps around the end of the plug. There's a little indention there for it. And so what happens is that comes loose over time, and then whenever you're it just it's a strain relief so you just got to put one back so I resoldered the wire and put a little zip tie there and it should last until the zip tie starts rotting okay so we'll plug it back in and hopefully that'll fix our little men popping up which I've never seen I've never seen one do that 
Boy, it's going to be exciting. Are you folks ready for it? Oh, the anticipation's killing me. Okay, let's try it again. Now remember, it would not score because the little men are what actually knocks the switch over. So we've got to get the little men to pop up or it will never score again. In all of eternity, this thing will never score again. And let's be honest here, folks. It's about on its last legs. If it didn't make it here, would it have gotten fixed? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. So what we want real bad, okay? Now we're trying to help it, but we need, we need it to help us just a little bit. You know what I mean? This is the point in time when it needs to let us know if it wants to keep working. This thing's 60 years old. It's pretty beat up. We're staying late trying to fix the thing. So maybe we'll get a little help from, from uh, the, the Williams designers from back in the day. Did they design something good enough that would last 60 years if you just serviced it a little bit? All right, so let's try our single again. Oh! Oh, boy! Oh, my God! Whew! Oh, man, I don't know if I can hang it. Oh, the little guy popped up. Oh, my God! Look at him! Did you see it? Rewind the video. He popped up and ran the first. Oh, my Lord. Oh, this is the big one. Whew. Man. The thing we worked all this time on. And it started helping us. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Let's try another. So that was that single. Let's see. Whew. Remember, there's four of them on there. I hope all four. Man, if all four of them work, what are we going to do? I don't know. I'm almost afraid to. Well, we'll try. Yeah, we will try it. We'll try. Maybe it'll work. Oh my God! Oh, there's bases. There's there's runners on both bases. Man. Okay. So we did a single, and we've got runners on two bases. Oh boy, let's try another single. Now, it looked to me like all of them are tied together, so if one works, they all ought to work. Let's look at it from this angle. Oh, man! Base is loaded, baby! Oh, boy! So we don't have a run yet. But if I hit another single, somebody's going home. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get ready to score a run. Oh boy! Did you hear it? Oh my lord! You heard it, right? That can only mean one thing. I heard the I heard the, the ding. Oh my god! Oh, it's working again. Whew, this too much. Oh boy. It's like a repairman's dream. Okay, so the single's working. Will the double cooperate with us? You think the, du the double might cooperate? Let's see. So we got a guy on first. We got a guy on second. We got a guy on third. And we got one run. What happens if we hit a double? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh, boy. Thank all the viewers we're leaving. We're losing right now because they're boring people. If you're boring, leave. All the fun's about to happen. Okay, so. <laughs> we got a double. That ran two guys home. We got two more runs, and now there's a guy on second and a guy on third. So if I hit another double, the guy on third should run home. The guy on second should run home, and then a guy should run to second, and it should be little metal men that you can see <laughs> all the way across the room. Okay, here we go. We got three runs. I can't. I can't. I don't even know what. I don't even know what to say to people. Sixty years old. Oh my lord. This is amazing. The thing is actually working after sixty freaking years. So we got one thing left to try, folks. 
two things left to try. We got to see if the mighty triple will work. And then I forgot. There is one even greater than that. <laughs> okay. So there is a guy on second. If I hit a triple, that sucker ought to run home. And then a guy ought to run all the way to third base. Here we go. Perfect. It's working perfect, folks. But you know what all the kids dream of, right? It's to hit the ball and touch them all. Here we go, grand, the, the home run. This one doesn't have a grand slam anymore. So this guy should run home. The other guy should pop up out of home plate, run all four bases, and score another run. Whoop, if I can reach that one. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So after all these years, we got the running man unit to work as it's supposed to. Now it needs some cosmetic attention, obviously. We'll figure out what we're going to do with that. But uh, fan-freaking-tastic. That's about as cool as it gets, isn't it? Wow. Hmm. Awesome. Okay, so obviously it needs a lot more work, but as you can see, the thing decided to start cooperating. You know why? Because it was well designed. This says Williams, people. You think they were and around at Williams? No! They were making some quality stuff at Williams back in the day. This is 1962, built in Chicago. Williams Electronics. Cool as it gets. Alright, so there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed it so far. Hope you enjoyed us having a little fun with it. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. You want to know how you can support our channel? If you would like to support our channel, down below the video here, there are some links to Amazon. All you got to do is, if you decide to buy something on Amazon, now don't go buy something if you weren't going to buy it. We don't want your money. We don't want your money, people. We just want, if you're going to buy something on Amazon, use our link to go to Amazon, and it gives us between, I've been telling everybody 3% is higher than that on some stuff. Um, some stuff it's 8, 9%. I didn't realize that, but it's become very apparent. So that's been uh, picking up lately. We appreciate everybody doing that. Now, if you don't have time to do that or you're not going to buy anything on Amazon, that's just fine. The video is free and we'll see you on the next one. So don't worry about it. But if you're going to buy something on Amazon any, anyway and you remember us, we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And last but not least, don't forget to check out my brother Donnie. So my brother has a channel here on YouTube. Uh, we work on pinball machines, arcade games, jukeboxes. My brother Donnie works on old vehicles, works on uh, old buildings. There is a small town near here that we have bought a couple buildings in the downtown area. We're fixing those up so that we can rent them out to help kind of revitalize downtown. So we've been doing all kinds of that stuff over there on his channel for quite a while. So go check that out if you haven't already. And uh, we will see you there. Now, we're going to do more videos on this awesome game. We still have to do the cosmetic stuff. We're going to repaint it. Um, and then, of course, obviously the play field needs all kinds of work. We're not even batting yet, and we haven't used the pitch, the pitching machine yet. Usually you can't do it with your hand. <laughs> you have to actually play it. Um, but getting that running man unit working was very cool, and uh, that got the scoring working. So... Wow. Wow. So we'll do some more videos where we keep working through it. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you'll join us for the next one. Y'all have a good night. And remember, people, try not to take the world so seriously. You're supposed to, enter, you're supposed to be entertained by stuff like this, right? This is an entertainment device. It helps you forget about maybe some of the other things you have to worry about in your life and just lay back and enjoy America's pastime, which probably used to be baseball and now is probably pinball <laughs> so we'll see you on the next video